The big uh, question, uh, we all study uh, in high school uh, the simple fundamental laws of optics. For example, how light gets reflected by a surface. That's called Descartes' law. It says that light comes off after re reflection with the same angle of incidence. It's so simple, some consider it trivial, but it's not. Snell's law says tell us when light traverses a boundary between two media, how it is deflected. Okay. And these laws are known since basically the 16th century, uh, around that time. Now, uh, recently we have revisited these fundamental laws of optics, again, by looking them in the context of nanotechnology. We have asked the, sir, the following question. If we pattern this interface, the surface between two media, with structure, this could be metallic or other structures, that are separated, this is very important to stress, by a sub-wavelength distance, much less than the wavelengths, then light that impinges of them sees like a new surface because it's so tiny space. So we have called this surface metasurface. And we have found out that again, by changing the design of this nanostructure, we can we come to generalize law of reflection and refraction. This is the key point. Light now comes in at a certain angle, but comes off at a different angle. This is new. This does not happen. Oh, when you, when you hit a, a surface, a metasurface, light comes into the medium with, a, with an angle that is different from the Snell's law. So now you can ask me the question, are you violating Snell's law and Descartes' law? No not fundamental, because these laws sit behind a more general law that was uh, figured out by Pierre de Fermat, the famous physicist and mathematician, the same Fermat of Fermat's theorem in uh, Last Fermat's theorem. So he found that light follows the path of minimum time between two points. So when we went back to our metasurfaces, we found that we could explain our quote-unquote new, new, uh, new, new laws by simply still applying the path of minimum time. And you can say, how can this happen? Well, it happens in a very simple way you can think about it. If you structure, if you structure the surface in an appropriate way, what are you really doing? We are putting in tiny objects which are called resonators or antennas. What do these tiny objects do? They store light for a certain time and they then re-emit it. And in the process of doing this, you see the actual, this introduces a time delay, so to speak. So now if you take into account the effect of the surface in the propagation of light, you find this generalized law. The mathematics is very elegant, is the same, and in two Literally, three simple formulas, minimum amount of math, these things pop out. So we got very excited, we published a science paper, and this has honestly opened up a new field. You know, within uh, two years there was huge number of citations because people see the potential. The next thing what we did is this. This was a brilliant idea for one of my best postdocs, Patrice uh, Genevay from France, who came to me and says, Federico, now I think I know how to design the metasurface. So if I come in with a simple light beam parallel, what comes off is a vortex. That light creates a spiral, you know, coming out in a spiral, vortex beam. It's a flat surface. There is no real thickness. This is the thing. These surfaces are nanometer thick. So, so he was able to design it, did the experiment, and so indeed that a vortex comes out. And then he said, you know, we have to do something useful. Okay? People start asking, okay, Federico, is this just fun? No, you know, I like to play. It's designer physics, but it's also new technology. So I had another brilliant uh, uh, student who was doing the PhD from Italy, Francesco uh, uh, Ieta, I asked him to think about this design, and he designed and made this flat lens. Now, this flat lens is an important application of flat optics. It's a completely flat lens that focuses light perfectly. What I mean perfectly, look, all lenses have aberrations. 
the normal lens is a curve. What aberration means is that you cannot focus precisely. There is some fuzziness. And the fuzziness relates to the spherical curvature. This is fundamental. You see this camera, he's filming me now. Why is why do the lenses are so thick? Because you have to compensate for this spherical uh, aberration by adding other lenses that undo. But then it's bulky and thin. So our lens, because of the fundamental new design, that it's, again, it's nanostructured. In a way, we eliminate completely spherical aberration. It's still inefficient. There are many problems to solve. But what made my day, when the paper was published, someone from a very big and important company came, really mentioned them, called me up and says, we are interested in this work. He says, why are you interested? He said, well, I'm interested. I mean, you know, he asked me a question. Then I'll ask you a question, Professor Capas. Can we make a, a smartphone as thin as a credit card? And I still said, what, what is he talking about? He says, look, the thickness, one of the limiting factors is the thickness of the lens. If now we can use one of your lenses in the future, we could dramatically shrink uh, uh, the thickness of the smartphone. And uh, we are just starting at the beginning. I think the implication of flat optics is, an, is a simple way, you see. Because these are designer material, and it's all done on the surface. We can use the same patterning technology used, for example, for integrated circuit. We do not have to go in the bulk to design the material. Everything is designed on the surface. We can make flat components, and then you can dream, you know, we can, because it's flat, we can put these optics lenses on a flexible substrate on a panel that we can roll and carry around, right? So there are many applications of flat optics to flexi flexible templates, to flexible substrates, and so forth. Application in displays, uh, you can pattern uh, the tip of a fiber, new types of stethoscopes, and so forth. So we are just at the beginning of an extremely exciting uh, time uh, for new technology based on this flat optics, in my opinion, and I say it's more than my opinion because I see how the field has taken off since we have started. We published this first paper, which was the fundamental part. The challenge here is the following. The main technological challenge is, uh, so far we have demonstrated proof of principle of these flat lenses and so forth, but they are inefficient. Okay, basically not enough light is actually focused the way it should be. So we have to make efficient uh, lenses and so forth. The next thing we have to make them broadband so that they focus light at different wavelengths. So far we have shown that if one design works only for one wavelength. Fortunately, recently, we and others also are starting to figure out strategies so that we can make this flat optics actually broadband. This is very important. So it works at many colors, not just one color. And then second, there are ways that you actually can solve the efficiency problem and make them efficient. But these are the technological challenges. The science uh, is a bigger question, you see. Uh, you can ask, uh, see, we have asked the questions in the following way, because we are experimentalists, we are designers. Suppose I design, I design the surface in a certain way. How can I design it so when light comes on it, a certain light beam, a vortex or something else comes out? So we, we, we design first and then say this comes out. But now you can ask another question is, I want, Federico, I want from you a certain beam that comes to you, reflected or refracted to you. How do I design the surface so that it creates a certain beam? And this is a, a general class of problems called inverse problems, where you sort of know the solution, you want a certain solution, and now how to design it, okay? And this is, so this is a, a really wide open. I'll tell you what is the ultimate big question. This could be really revolutionary. These surfaces are so far static. We design them, but we cannot change them. So we have asked the question, can we make dynamic metasurfaces? Dynamic means so that we can tune them in real time. 
So now that we can change the beam that is reflected in real time, right? And high speed. You can ask yourself, is there such a device there? Sure there is. It's called, you can look it up. It costs $20,000. It costs, it's called spatial light modulator. It allows you from an incoming light beam by moving mirrors or a tuning liquid crystal to reflect off any kind of beam you want in principle. You know, it could be a vortex beam or some other strange beam. What's the problem? It's slow. It's, uh, you know, milliseconds, maybe tens of microseconds. So we, cl we think we, we will be able in the future to make meta surfaces which we can tune and make them high speed modulator down to nanoseconds, thousand times faster. People have told us, Federico, if you or others can make this, this will revolutionize uh, technology. So this is a really big challenge, but we are after it, you know, step by step.